You're listening to episode 43 of Lifestyle Locker Radio with Dr. Dan Sullivan. The greatest doctor is not at the local hospital. The greatest doctor is not at the pharmacy giving out drugs. The greatest doctor is not down the block giving surgeries. And the greatest doctor is actually not a chiropractor giving chiropractic adjustments. The greatest doctor is inside you. Hi, I'm Dr. Josh Han, and welcome to the Lifestyle Locker Radio, where we dive into what makes an awesome lifestyle. From relationships to money mindset, nutrition to fitness, emotional health to peak performance, we bring you on an amazing journey to unleashing your human potential. So here's a little bit about Dr. Dan Sullivan. He's got a passion for bringing certainty to the chiropractic profession by educating on the simple science that proves the importance of chiropractic philosophy and the power of an adjustment. Dr. Dan travels worldwide to speak to students, doctors, and the public about the power of chiropractic, the overwhelming evidence that supports it, and the necessity it should play in today's healthcare. After graduating from Northwestern Chiropractic College in 2004, he built one of the largest practices in the profession, seeing over 1,000 patient visits per week. He served in the World Championships in 2010, 2011, and the Olympic Games in 2012 as an official chiropractor for the USA wrestling team. He's a graduate of the Academy of Chiropractic Philosophy, Diplomate Program, and launched the Chiropractic Advocate Mentorship Training and Resource Program in 2015. Dr. Dan's strategies and resources help hundreds of chiropractors each month increase their certainty, vision, and results. His mission is to help change the public's perception of chiropractic worldwide. And here we have Dr. Dan Sullivan. Locker Nation, we have the amazing Dr. Dan Sullivan with us today. As you heard, this guy has an amazing practice helping thousands of people. He's also an advocate for the profession, teaching chiropractors the science, as you heard. This guy is also an advocate for, for just humanity. And with Dr. Dan, we want to get a story because, you know, everybody's got a story which helped them get to where they are today. So, Dr. Dan, welcome to the show. And let's hear a little bit more about your story. Well, man, hey, it's awesome to be here, Doc. I, uh, yeah, I mean, here's the thing, and, and, and it's funny. Let me, let me, let me get, uh, let me get someone excited about this, because yeah, we're going to talk about a little bit about the brain and maybe some neurology, and more importantly, how your spine and a chiropractor would have a part to play in your life and your health and and the whole thing. But here's the thing that I get most excited about before I jump into where I came from and how I kind of got here. I, if you understand, you may be a mom out there, a dad out there, you're a, somewhere in between, you don't have kids, it doesn't matter. You need to know, and this is the thing we deal with in healthcare right now, right, is this the entire healthcare system. And I could go off. There was a guy that just came out from, from a, you know, a major player saying we don't even have a healthcare system, right? And you've probably talked about it. I know you've talked about it before. But here's what I want. There's so much confusion and there's so much sickness. The one thing that I feel and I get most passionate about that every human being needs to know is that the greatest doctor is not – at the local hospital. The greatest doctor is not the pharmacy giving out drugs. The greatest doctor is not down the block giving surgeries. And the greatest doctor is actually not a chiropractor giving chiropractic adjustments. The greatest doctor is inside you. And I say that, and it's not just a good motto or a tagline. It is to say that there is a, an intelligence in your body that literally created you from two cells. And that means seem abstract. But what I'm going to tell you is you, you're currently breathing in stuff that your body's responding to. Your immune system is fighting. Your heart is beating. Your lungs are breathing. You don't have to think about it. You're, you cut yourself and you heal. And so one of the things that you need to know, and I, and I just I travel around the world talking about this, is that there is hope, and the hope is in you. The hope is in what's currently in your body. And uh, as a dad of three little girls and one brand new girl, three months old, I just you just look the the power that's in there, the intelligence that's in there. So I get excited about going to doctors, right? I don't care what doctor that is, in a sense, as long as they're ones that first recognize that that is that that the the greatest doctor is inside. And then the best way to get health and reach your God given potential is to remove interference that anything that would be blocking that intelligence. And so I don't mean to start off so crazy and so you know out there, but I just want to encourage you listeners out there, like. If you understood how great you already are and the potential that you already have in you, then your actions will change. And I know that, you know, that would be my objective on this, you know, podcast that we get to spend some time together is that your actions will change when you can change the lens to how you look at your body. 
And I'm telling you, that's the HOPE that the world currently needs that you may need right now. You're like, man, I'm stressed, I'm depressed, I can't do this, I can't do that, I've got all these diagnoses, I've got conditions, or I'm just not re- feeling like I'm on my A game, I can't reach the potential, I can't catch a break. I want you to know that inside is where the answers lie. And, uh, and I know, Dr. Josh, you talk about it all the time, but but that's what gets me most excited. How do I get here? I came from a big family. I got seven brothers and sisters. I got two brothers who are medical doctors. My mom's been a nurse for over 30 years. My sister's an occupational therapist. So here I am as a chiropractor, the black sheep of the family. Uh, I got here because I got an accident. Uh, pole vaulting was in high school. And uh, one thing led to another. I went to a chiropractor. I went to all the other doctors. Nobody could do anything for me. In fact, it was all, you know, it got to the point where, you know, six weeks in, still hurting, couldn't make one lap around the track. And I was, you know, crushed because I wanted to play uh, baseball. It was just around the corner track. I kind of conceded that that was over at that point because I couldn't do it. And um, and they said it was all in your head. I mean, I had all the all the imaging, MRIs, the the uh, your best specialists and neurologists and bone scans and orthopedists. And um and they said it was all in my head and that the best thing we could do is there's a little bit of arthritis in your hip that maybe you could do some sur- a surgical consult on. And our family dentist said, you should try a chiropractor. And we're like, we don't even know what that is. And uh, we went there and, you know, the rest is history. You know, within probably four or five, four or five weeks, I was back, didn't miss a game that summer as far as baseball, played baseball in college. I just, and so I went to chiropractic school thinking that I'm going to help athletes because that's what I was. And I thought that was just about bad backs and, and bad necks. Lo and behold, I was shockingly, you know, amazed at what I got into. And, and uh, that's what kind of led me here. That's really cool. So, and, and today, as as a, you're, we're at a, you're at a college for years. You're at a graduated from chiropractic college. So you're still athletic today. People can't see you on here, but yeah, you're still pretty active. I know you chase, uh, chase very, kids very, around, but yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, very active. Very important part of, of, uh, you know, my life. Yes. Yeah, is, is, is staying active and, and, uh, but not for the ways that, you know, I used to think, you know, it's like, you know, and again, you know, this doc is like, you just, now it's, it's, it's to stay, you know, again, living to a potential, keep an energy up, but Doing it in a way, I just, my approach is even different. You, we know this, I'm sure you've talked about this, but the approach of, you know, you just, and I deal with so many, you know, we deal with so many people on a consistent basis. Like it's not about having, you know, bigger biceps or being able to run a mile better. It's being able to remove interference so that I have the least amount of interference as possible so that I can live again, you know, mentioned kids, I can live and be 70 years old and play with grandkids and great grandkids and doing the hobbies and living independently for as long as possible with the highest level of quality. So I even say that there's a difference, you know, a big difference when I was in college is like getting performance looks a lot different. And I just want to encourage your listeners, I'm going to come back to this the entire time here with you. And that is changing the lens on how you see things. You may say, I want to drop 50 pounds. I'm saying that's not the, that should not be your number one question. Your number one question should be, I want to actually begin to get healthier. I want to remove interferences because here's what you need to know. Health is pre-programmed in your body. It's already pre-programmed. It came with the programming, right? And so very few diseases, conditions, weight gain, all that is related to genetic tendencies, right? So it's not about your DNA. It's about your lifestyle hence lifestyle locker exactly. right so yeah that's that's the beauty man of all this whole thing and i just want to make sure you, you know, everybody catches that that there's hope and not only that it's uh it's better than you think it is all right so we got a we got a big topic we're going to kind of jump in called chiropractic here so i'm just trying to think where we should actually start you know we're going to mention the word subluxation at some point um, yep. but what i think is important um, because the people, some of the people listening, I'm sure have been to a chiropractor, whether it be for back pain or for performance, or that maybe their, their child had an ear infection and they showed up at a chiropractor because someone sent them there. Um, but you use a line that I think is so fantastic. And I think, think everybody will vibe with is, you know, you know, or it's really a question, you know, would you rather have a back problem or a brain problem? Yeah. Right. And that's, and, and, and let me tell you where that stemmed from. So when I look now at the research, right, whether we like it or not, the language of today is science and research. And, and there's goods and there's bads to that. But here's the, here's the question that I essentially started to ask, you know, patients and doctors and students, everybody's like, would you rather have a back problem or a brain problem? See, because what we don't know and what we've never been told is that back problem. What we know to be true, a specific condition called subluxation is this very subtle misalignment of a spinal vertebra, a very subtle. And I say that because even children, even kids, even my baby who was born naturally at home had one of these tiny little misalignments that was influencing their brain, right? And it was like, well, you say, well, how could, wow, you're a brain problem for a newborn? How could that happen, right? 
And so we start to look back at the evidence that shows us, well, even the birth process is challenging and traumatic to a baby, even a natural birth process, right? You take that and, and you say, is there studies in that? Yeah, you got early 90s, 1992, Heiner Biedermann did a study, a German a medical doctor. So we got this data, right, that shows that, man, most kids are susceptible to these tiny misalignments, what we call verbal subluxation. But now what we know about this thing called subluxation, which we've been, you know, you know, we've been dealing with this thing as a chiropractic profession for 122 years, right? To the day, 122 years to the day, yeah. we've been dealing with this thing, right? And so that seemingly, and here's the thing, you've, you know, you're a listener out there, like, I know you know somebody that have gone to a chiropractor and they have gotten a result with something that seemingly was unrelated to the spine. You're like, Man, how would an ear infection be related to the spinal bone, right? How would, you know, thyroid problems or stomach digestion or GERD acid reflux, how would infertility, how would you start getting adjusted and all of a sudden you can have a baby again when you tried all the other stuff? And here's what you need to know. There is an intimate connection between your spine, the way your spine moves, and the way it's aligned with your brain. And the central nervous system. And so when we look, when I looked at the data, especially the last 10 years since 2007, you look at the research, it clearly shows, and, and as chiropractors, there's an art to chiropractic, which is a beauty, is that all chiropractors do things a little bit differently based on their technique. And so what we found out, regardless of technique, their art, the art form, regardless of which approach they use from a technique standpoint, what, we're, what they're doing, what we're doing every time we make an adjustment is we're changing the brain. And when we change the brain, it changes the body's ability to comprehend and adapt to everything, including its internal and external environment. So, the, so it turns out that this subluxation, this subtle misalignment that most people cannot feel until it gets bad enough, right? That's why you think, well, I'm going to wait till my back goes out or my, I've got a back pain. No, no, no. These things happen just like high blood pressure or just like plaque in an artery. They happen just like cavities happen without you feeling it. And then, you know, and then they build up. And so here's the kicker is that that brain problem is because of this misalignment and it's not, the body cannot comprehend itself. And so that's where it becomes, you know, again, we go back to this doctor, I mean, part, part of our entire, you know, why we exist is to make sure the world can see that the spine and a chiropractor is more than just a bad back. And so, yeah, a brain problem, it, a, a tiny misalignment, what we call subluxation is a brain problem. And now the neurology backs that up. Yeah, that I think that's so cool because the pictures have been, you know, people's vision of chiropractors, like you said, neck pain, back pain, how you found a chiropractor, right? Or when you were injured as an athlete, you know, and then you have this wow factor and then you realize, holy cow, this is a lot bigger. And I know you've been doing a lot of research. I know you've been doing, I mean, you're teaching at the, at, a, at Life University, which is a chiropractic college in Georgia. Um, but you're finding out and sharing such powerful information, not only with with the public, but the chiropractors, because yeah, we've been around, you said for 122 years, but this, and this, these processes have been going on in people's brains and in their spines for forever. And now we're able to actually show people right behind you. People can't see this, but you have, and behind me actually as well, you have this really cool chart, which kind of just shows what happens when you get that tiny, which could be a millimeter of a misalignment and the spine can have this cascade of effects. And it's not always A plus B equals C. You know, I have A plus B equals like Z. And people mm -hmm. can't really start to connect the dots, right? Because the body is so, um, it's so smart, so intelligent, but it's so complex. You know, we, we people like to kind of compare us to a, uh, a car, right? Like we could take this part out, put this part. And if you do an oil change, not so true, right? Would you agree? Right. So yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing is, is, you know, <laughs> we are the most adapting organism I and mean, you go, you know, you have to think about it. You walk into a meat locker, what happens? You start getting goosebumps. Why? Your body's trying to keep this internal temperature in. You don't have to think about it. The body is so intense. How about you go out for a run in the, in, you know, like you like to do, mm -hmm. go out for a run in the hot heat, you know, in, in August heat and your body starts to immediately sweat. Why? It's trying to keep that temperature normalized. It does. You don't even have to think about it. Right. And so this is the, okay, so let's take it to the next level. So now you've got a fever, right? Your body's, and I remember I tell a story at the time I was, I was, uh, you know, my grandma's, I was at my grandma's when I was young. I remember probably nine, 10, eight, nine years old. And I fell out of a, we had this tree house. We always play all the cousins. And I fell out and I got this big sliver on my, on my arm. My, I get, I come in, my dad takes a needle, heats up the end of a needle with a lighter before he's going to take and get out that sliver. Why do you want to do that? Why did he heat, the, heat it up? You asking Question. me? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm asking you. Why, why do you heat it up? <laughs> why well, heat it? Well, it could be a couple of things. You can you can make it so it can seal the problem, yep. or it can actually stop anything from getting infected. Exactly. So, and that's good. You, you doubled it up. Uh, <laughs> but but even from from a, from a when I was this question, simple, sterilize. Everybody yep. knows heat will sterilize. So you t- you 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 raise the temperature, huh? Would it be a good idea then if foreign bugs got into your body that shouldn't be there, and then your body wanted to sterilize itself and get rid of those without harming itself. Wow. An internal thermostat goes up. You don't have to think about it. Guys, this is the thing where we talk about the lens and say, oh, a fever could be good for me then because it's actually getting rid of this stuff. We know certain so certain proto, pro, proteins are produced at 101 degrees. We know that you, sh- you shut the liver or the spleen, nutrition of the spleen shuts off at about 103 degrees, which means it actually starts to starve you know, uh, uh, certain areas of the body so it doesn't feed into cancer things and it inhibits viral replications. So this is the stuff where you start to, we, you know, again, you study the body, look at it like it is so intelligent. And the reason why that's a big deal is your mom out there, your dad out there, you're just a, you know, someone trying to, you know, and again, navigate through life, try to get healthier, trying to reach your potential. Why that's so important is because the way you look at things matters. How you look at things is going to be based on how your actions are going to change, right? So if I know I've got a symptom and that symptom was actually like it's a runny nose, well, we know those mucous membranes are going to, you know, uh, uh, they're going to uh, produce more mucus when the body's fighting something. Why? Because it wants to get rid of stuff, drain it out of there. And we're told that, right, how about your body gets something bad inside of it? It wants to get, eliminate it, right? So it does that quickly through through vomit. And we were led to just everything is pill, potion, lotion, surgery. Let's let's feel good. And to your point of the car, I think about the car. You know, you, if you you know you picture this, you drive into a car, you get you're some there's some noise going on, and the check engine light came on, right? And they they uh, they they, they um, you know you walk out of there, so they you drive in there, the mechanic looks at it, they go, I got this simple solution for this. They go in, they come out, they put put a piece of black electrical tape, and they put. Uh, uh, earbuds in your ears. If you want, you can't hear the noise anymore. And two, you don't see the, the check engine light, right? Would you be mad about that? Of course you would, right? No, it seems a little bit of a, you know, uh, uh, extreme example. But the point is we have all these symptoms that go on in our bodies. And yet we have experts like my brother who's an MD, he's a great guy, very smart, intelligent, caring, but yet they're trained to just look at the symptom and then cover up with drugs that we know have a lot of dangerous side effects. So this is the stuff, again, that gets us decided. And we as chiropractors, we don't say that we're going to go in and cure or heal or right try to treat. But we simply remove interference to the greatest. And, and to your point about the poster behind me and the poster behind you is this. The power of an adjustment has all the neurology and all these boxes that are affected when a, when a spine becomes misaligned. Subtly, it affects the upper brain centers. It affects the sympathetic chain ganglia, which is part of the central nervous system. That affects the adrenal medulla, which is part of your hormone system. And so when all those things get fired off and aren't working appropriately or they're not uh, you know, uh, relaxed and calm – they get fired up. What happens is it puts this body in this fight or flight, and that is recipe for disaster. Essentially, every chronic disease is in this dominant sympathetic state, and we know that through the adjustment, it actually reduces that sympathetic. So, somebody, you know, like a, a patient of mine that was it came in eighty thousand dollars worth of worth of and ten years of her life, her and her, son, her and her husband been married for ten years, eighty thousand dollars on on fertility drugs. They had two adopted children, and within three months, she's pregnant after care. And they were like, "How could this be?" Like, like this is crazy. How, mm-hmm. what did you do to me? Right. And it goes back to what well, here, we, it's not what I did to you. It's what we removed. We removed interference and we allowed your body to do what it was always intended to do, but more IVFs or more, you know, infertility treatments and more of all the stuff wasn't going to get rid of that interference. And that's why we get excited about, you know, everyone getting, getting this information. Yeah. So this is so cool. And I, I, you, you're bringing up stories that I've heard growing up, you know, in a chiropractic family, you know, my father, and this is just to kind of piggyback what you're saying, you know, he would ask me this when I was young. He goes, you know, if we both ate a piece of raw chicken, knowing raw chicken is probably not what you want to eat, and one of us starts vomiting and one of us doesn't, which is the healthy person. And you know, and, and I know, but it's the person is getting rid of it. But what does modern medicine say? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This stuff is coming out of your body. Let's plug it up. So you plug it up the top. Then what is your body going to do? Where's the next hole that's going to want to go out? Yep. The other end. Yep. Oh, wow, we better plug that up too. So now we, we lock these toxins in that your body's innately trying to get rid of. And then what do we create? This long-standing, possibly infection, possibly condition of some sort that now will kind of drag out what, what may have been a day of healing. Now it may take months, mm-hmm. multiple medications to kind of figure out what the hell is going on. 
and they never really get to the cause of the actual problem, which was yep. letting the body do what it needed to do, right? Removing the, that toxic chemical interference. Mm-hmm. So um, do you have any other neat – I, I love the way you use stories to, to describe chiropractic, and we mentioned the brain, we mentioned – um, and I know you could probably dive a little bit more into maybe a little bit of the science and uh, I'm a little nerdy, not as maybe nerdy as you know, all this, I think the really cool stuff, but to kind of break it down into simple, simple words, but using some of the, telling some of the science, you know, from like a, an athletic point from a, you know, a child's point, because people go, wait, your kids get adjusted. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I think one of the main things that, you know, I sat out there and we talked just before this and we're like, you know, I just, I love it from a simple standpoint. Like I need, I need things so simple. I, I, although I love, you know, some of the hardcore data, I'm not, I, I, you know, give it to me on a platter. So this is where I, I, I probably, um, let me just give you an example. I keep saying subtle, right? When we say subtle, cause so often a parent says my child would never need a chiropractor because I mean, I can't, I mean, I went in for a sciatic problem one time and I saw, and I saw the scans and the x-rays and the posture and I was, obviously I had a big problem, right? But so they can't equate to the fact that, wow, my child would not have that. And they're right. They wouldn't have probably that 30 year old problem, mm-hmm. but they could have a day old problem just out of the womb where they could have a, a six month old problem or a year old problem, right? We essentially know that virtually, you know, 99% of people come out of the womb, even for that matter, subluxated or these tiny, um, a tiny misalignment that, that needs to be addressed, that they can't fix on their own. And so what happens is that tiny, tiny misalignment based on the stresses that it can't adapt to, right? Whether it be, it may even been in utero. There's research to show in utero, these ch- the children are, are subluxated and not because the, the movement and the mom subluxated and then mom's not getting proper th- you know, nutrients and, 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 and even movement that matter, uh, then they will come out and, 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 and trauma. And then if you don't think that that did it, you know, watch a two year old learn how to walk, right. Mm-hmm. Or just watch a, a day in the life of a four year old. Right. And, and so all these accumulated stresses add up on, and then when the body can adapt to it, what happens is that subluxation occurs. And so this is where, man, and, and I want, I need you to hear this part, right. And so you're a listener out there. And I, I say this all the time because it's not, this is not about chiropractic, right? It's, it's just not. And here's what I mean by that. The physiology that gets interfered with, right? The, the physiological processes that this subluxation creates, this misalignment that we know interferes with the central nervous system. The central nervous system is your governing system, your brain, your spinal cord, and all your nerves. Like it's the governing system. Your body is constantly adapting to everything constantly, every millisecond, but you don't have to think about it so brilliantly. But when that interference happens, which we know happens when a tiny little misalignment occurs in the spine, particularly in the upper cervical, it's the worst area because of all the neurology and stuff, just the worst area to, to get misalignment. That's the most important area for a chiropractor to address. But let's just remove the fact that that, that, that – there's a profession called chiropractic. Let's remove any chiropractor from the face of the planet. Let's take away all the schools, all the associations, all the profession, you know, all the, all the associate, all chiropractors, everything. Not another adjustment given. Here's the question I ask. Would the same physiology occur that, that is the reason why chiropractors get such great results? Would those subluxations still occur and still create such chaos and dysfunction in the body that lets that leads to symptoms and, and really a disorganized you know a person not reaching their potential does that still occur yes <laughs> see and this is the thing that we and i'm guilty of it as well it's like we i always want to talk chiropractic but it's really not chiropractic it's just saying hey there's this thing that the profession of chiropractic has acknowledged has found through through trial and error dating back to 1895 when a deaf janitor in Davenport, Iowa was, was adjusted and eventually over a period, of time, a period of adjustments, he actually got his hearing back and that led to all this other stuff, trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. Now, we now know this profession actually addresses, right? It's, it's, it's like if nobody ever addressed cavities. So if there's never a dental profession, we would still eat food, get plaque, get decay, degeneration, and t- teeth would rot out unnecessarily if we didn't know anything about brushing. But it's not the profession. It's, it's, it's that the profession was designed to actually t- eliminate or to prevent or to you know, effectively uh, uh, help these problems from not becoming worse. And that's what the chiropractic profession does is it's effectively acknowledging this physiology that occurs 
because of the intimate relationship with the spine and the central nervous system. So chiropractic is not that the, is the, it's like take chiropractic out. There's still that connection. Chiropractic is just has addressed it just like the dental profession does, just like a heart doctor would say, hey, let's look at the let's look at your blood vessels and make sure everything's running smoothly through there. We are experts in the nervous system and the relationship with the spine. And so that being said, it's unequivocal. What that means is the research has been done over that pretty much every child is experiencing these things and adult and, you know, and it's not about bad backs or bad necks or just because you have back pain or because you have a headache. Now at the end stage of those, yes, we get great results with those. And now we know the neurology behind that is all because of the central nervous system. So, I mean, I, I don't, I kind of went off there for a second. I, I hope I answered the question, but <laughs> the answer is always, I got neurologists and I go into these rooms, right? So I go into rooms of PhDs and MDs and research centers and talk to them and teach them about chiropractic. Now, but I don't start with chiropractic. I say, here's what you guys understand. What we know now to be true from a science, for research and physio physiology, anatomy and physiology. And now let me tell you why the professional chiropractic exists because we can, we can address this. And now it'd be, it'd be one thing if we have like a year's worth of testimonies or maybe even a couple of weeks or maybe even a, a decade of testimonies. We've got 122 years worth of testimonies that happen every single week from people with allergies, asthmas, diabetes, blood pressure, fertility, right? All of it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we treat it, but when we do address some of the, that it seems to be some of the missing links that a lot of people are missing. And that's why I just encourage you to make sure if you're out there and you're not seeing a chiropractor, or under chiropractor, you know, maybe you have challenges with your questions and, you know, and again, that's what this is for. But, uh, man, I, I you know, I, I love being a chiropractor, not just because of what I get to practice, but because of what I get to do for my family. Which is so cool. But I, w I want to circle back for a second. You used a couple of words, and I'm not sure if everybody picked up on them. Because, you know, I'm from New York. I talk fast. But I think people yeah. in the South talk <laughs> faster, you know? Yeah. Um, you used the word fight or flight, which yeah. I've actually spoke about in other podcasts, which is that, that stress response, right? So, But most people are not running from a cheetah. Maybe in New York City, they're jumping away from a car that may run into them because they're not paying attention and they're on their cell phone. So... We hear we hear stress that actually you know is becomes chronic over time. How does that actually? How is that different? And how does that affect? Because we're really now we're now everybody's educated, right? They understand that the central nervous system is important. They understand the the connection between the brain, the body, the spine, all of these things. What's the difference physiologically, meaning the way things work inside between that acute stress response? And what people are, the way people are living and, and how chiropractic has an intimate relationship with helping both sides of that. Yeah. Well, first off, so even the word acute, right? So you may ask, well, what's the word acute mean? Acute means like something that needs to happen quickly and right away, right? A a a versus more, you know, long term, right? So mm -hmm. very now, very short term. And so that's one of the major points. So fight or flight is a perfect, right? Because the body's perfect, right? It's designed perfectly. It's a perfect expression. Let's just say, you know, you're, uh, you know, jumping at your, you're coming to your office, right? And you're in the middle of, you're going from Central Park across the street over to your office and a car's cut flying down there and you've got to, you know, fight or flight. You either got to, you know, unfortunately it wouldn't be a good idea to fight the car, yes. but you've got to <laughs> flight, right? Uh, another scenario reason where that whole came from is because you're fight or flight. Like you, 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 when you get into a scenario, whether you're in front of a tiger or a bear or you run into a person, he, another human being that is robbing you, right? You got to fight or flight. You're either going to get out of there or you're going to fight it, right? You're going to, for survival, it's the key is it's, it's survival behavior is what it is. Fight or flight is survival behavior. It allows you to behave in ways that are somewhat supernatural, right? And what I mean by that is think about this, right? People, when they get in that fight or flight, people can lift up a car, right? So, so you think about it, you've heard of that. How does that happen? Well, those hormones, right? And you got the, all these hormones going on, the adrenaline, adrenal, what's adrenaline, adrenal gland, right? Adrenal medulla. These are triggered by areas of the brain because it, it recognizes a scenario and allows you to get it. Now, here's the kicker, and let me pull the story together. Basically, what you need to know is that that scenario is supposed to be very short term in your body, short term, right? Seconds to minutes. So you could fight or flight. And when that happens, you've got all this physiology that changes. What I find is so intriguing. Like for instance, your clotting factors, like in that moment, your clotting factors will increase because your body is actually, what I mean by clotting is if you get cut, it actually makes that wound heal faster because you got increased clotting factors. How intelligent is that? Because if you've got a fight, it's saying that you may get banged up, scraped up, whether it be an animal, right? And again, this is survival about, you know, if we were out, you're out in the woods, right? Yep. And, um, and so your, your clotting factors go, go up. 
you're able to clot faster for survival because you may get cut. But here's the thing, at what expense? Some expense, you, you expense uh, concentration and learning, right? Do you need to, if you're in a fight or flight, you need to use your immune system right then and there to, to protect you from the virus you just you know, uh, came across, right? No. Do you need to digest the meat that you just ate that afternoon? No, you need all of your, a good majority of your blood to go to your extremities so you can fight or flight. That's where you're, that's where you get the strength. That's where you actually start. So it leaves the vital organs and it starts to go to survival. Now here's the kicker. You get, you know, you got that picture in your head. Like you don't need to be fertile and be reproductive if you're fight or flight. So this is the challenge is that we know when that spine is altered in position and not moving appropriately, what we call subluxation as chiropractors, that it puts your body into that fight or flight behavior physiology. And the challenge with that is, is when you stay in it long term, when it was never meant to be, we can now look up virtually every chronic disease from heart disease to diabetes to cancer to autoimmune, you name the chronic disease, and virtually everyone has a part of that disease is uh, would be described as fight or flight physiology, the sympathetic dominant state. And so what we know what happens through adjustment is when we remove the interference, it allows that state to become parasympathetic again. So it actually balances on the other side of the coin, this what we call rest, relaxation, digest, like this, this, this calming, this body where the healing happens. And so that's what chiropractic will remove and it gets you back over to the other side of the balance, remove the fight or flight, get you into this parasympathetic. And, and then why do kids, for instance, kids, right? Um, concentration, attention issues, learning, memory, all those things. When you're in fight or flight, you don't, you don't remember, like all that stuff goes away because you don't need it at that time. So this is where it goes back to, man, a subluxation, this, this spine could be related to learning and concentration and, and even depression and energy. And, and it does. And I'm glad you pointed that out. It all goes back to this, this, this balance of the nervous system and your body does it. We don't try to say, Hey, we need it more of this or that. We just remove the interference by finding the subluxation, you know, correcting it and allowing the body to do what it's always supposed to do. Ah, thank you so much for that. That was awesome. I like, I, I love your stories. I love how you can kind of build a, a, a you know, we're listening, right? But you can build this picture that people can put in their minds of how important it is to actually have that interference completely removed, regardless of age, regardless of pain, regardless of athletic ability, anything. Right. And it's it's so important. Um, and we're kind of at the point where I would like to actually, you know, I usually ask our our interviewees to give three golden nuggets of information. And I already know one of them that you're going to tell us, right? You're going to say, Get to a chiropractor, get your spine evaluated for subluxation because you need to have it checked. All right, so I, I took yeah. one for you. I apologize. Yeah. What would what would be a couple other golden nuggets you might think? Because we mentioned lifestyle, and, and yeah. this really is a, like we're talking about like a chiropractic lifestyle here at this point. Um, what would you say? What other couple? Or you could add three. I mean, yeah. Yeah, actually, it's funny because I was going to actually mention one prior because I want to give value. Like I was just thinking of one that was that's something you could do r- like like right now and, and every day and implement this, right? So yeah, you know, and, and to your point to back up, yes, you know, why we get so passionate about that everybody deserves not, you know, it's like I, I, I don't I don't necessarily watch my language. Like you don't you don't need you don't need anything. Man, you, you, somebody's on the other line. You get to make all the choices. The beauty that the world we live in, like you get to make the choices, right? Someone says once you go to car you got to keep going. No, no, no. You don't have to do anything, right? You get to you make the the choices you right mm-hmm. but now i would just like you know you go to the gym and work out like like you don't just eat one good meal you it's good to, you know to for longevity and everything else right so so but going to carpenter go for the right reasons right not regardless of, of pain if you're already and if you're already one that you're sitting there like you know what i know i got stress between my shoulders i know i've got this head thing i know i've got this my neck it always cracks i know my low back is always sore like those are big warning signs you know that's like that's like a dentist that, you know saying where well, your, your tooth already hurts and every time you brush in that area it's like real cold sensitivity and all that. Like, like, you're like oh, that is like crazy like you're already down the side we don't want anything further to go but where we're you know dr josh and i sit here so passionate about is because we know you're just not reaching your potential because it's about your brain and central nervous system not just about the spine and the, and the bones of your spine it's actually how you're living you live your life through your nervous system so when you can remove interference it's why we see so many patients they get off the table they get adjusted like man i this may sound weird doc but like i just i i'm like 
I feel better. Like the fog's been lifted. I feel like I look at things differently and, and we're like, that's not weird. You know, like that's, that's just science. That's chiropractic. That's the beauty of our, of our, again, vitalistic perspective that it's more than the sum of its parts, but, and I'll get to them here. So the two, two other things I tell you to do, going, one, man. you're doing no, good. <laughs> number one is, uh, so go to the right reasons to find a chiropractor, find one, some of some for your family. And that word that we call subluxation, somebody always asks, well, how do I know? Well, subluxation is a big deal, right? Because we know you want to go to somebody that's, that's has objective findings outside of just the pain model. And the reason I say is because usually they have a technique where they can deliver what they say they're going to deliver and have objective findings, not just saying, hey, where does it hurt? I'm going to push here or adjust here because you hurt there. But what are the objective findings, testing that allows me to see, just like dentists would take x-rays and look at things and say, hey, I'm not just going to go in there and see where it hurts and start <laughs> drilling away. It's like, no, I'm going to actually have a system. I've got a sequence of, a, of testing that I'm going to go through. And I'll be honest with you and tell you whether we can help or not help. And if so, how much care is needed and that sort of thing. So subluxation oriented and objective testing but the but the other thing that we'll talk on that on the sip on the um the balance right the nervous system balance what we know through the literature and this is a kind of a cool literature I, I i say this when i get a chance to um just just deep breathing right uh, uh um um there's a specific word for it you'd probably know just um 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 breathing uh uh what's what would be the word rhythmic rhythmic deep breathing taking it don't even have to be five minutes but just daily, try to go two to three minutes where you you may block out something, right? And it may be something in your prayer or meditation time or just quiet time. But take two to three minutes. There's cool research, like awesome research. Because if what we're saying is so great about this balance in the nervous system, what we know with rhythmic deep breathing will actually change that nervous system. And it's it's just as much emotion as it is the breathing part. And it gets this body in the rhythm. So deep breathing, take two to three minutes a day, right? And clear your mind and just think about deep breathing, deep breathing. And it may seem sound elementary. Oh, yeah, Dr. Danny is telling me to deep breathe. It may sound weird or elementary. Just, just, uh, just, you know, try me for a second, right? Just humor me and start doing this daily. I'm telling you, right? And we know physiologically there's awesome research out there supporting how this actually helps it's why you know dr josh you and i know is so dr bj why he always had the restroom afterwards right yep. he had a resting room because he wanted people to get that adjustment and be able to just take it in and their their nervous system to just acclimate to that interference and so you start to combine some of this stuff with that deep breathing with with uh um you know with 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 chiropractic and removing the interference and now you got you know really appetite and then and to stay along those lines you know and i know you've probably talked about this before but i'm you know a big proponent in lifestyle and nutrition not not again for because you should do this because you have this it's to keep interference removed right keep interference removed so i don't care if you get a hammer and you pound shingles into a home all day i don't care if you walk outside and and, and into the brisk and but get your heart rate up Get your heart rate up at some point in the day. I don't care if it's five minutes, if it's ten minutes. I mean, right now some of there's some great data on high uh, high intensity interval training, right? Uh, because of the hormones, it changes, and it goes back to the sympathetic. So I'm kind of the nervous system guy. So I like to know how does my nervous system that rules my body? How can I better get that into doing what it's doing by removing interference? So getting that heart rate up, and if you really want, it, if you're really kind of a you know someone that's a, 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 a you know a, a, a achiever. Uh, start doing high interval training. Basically, what that means, and I'm sure you've talked about this, but basically, just it's just getting your heart rate up really high uh, within your parameters and, and and doing something, and then taking a breath. Uh, uh, you can again Google this, but um, yeah, those are the top three things: is getting your body moving, heart rate up, deep rhythmic breathing, and chiropractic. And I th those things alone, everybody can do. Not asking you to change your entire diet plan. Not asking you to say do this. Those three simple things can really, I believe, you know, get you on the better path. And uh, and, and we all need to be reminded. Even somebody that's super, you know, you know, aware of this stuff and does it, we all need to be reminded how important it is. Yeah, awesome, Dr. Dan Sullivan. Love you, buddy. Absolutely appreciate you, this. Um, so we're gonna connect you with everybody. You're gonna have thousands of people listening to this, and I'm super excited because we're sharing this on Chiropractic's birthday, and what better than to have you on here? Yeah, man, I'm honored. It's honored. I, I truly am, man. I, this is, yeah. 
I know you all the stuff you've been doing lately and all the hype and I really see what's going on man this thing is blowing up and I I'm super stoked and uh, I, this is really gonna you know I think catch fire and not just like this interview but everything you're doing the people you're aligning yourselves with bringing on the experts and uh, and giving people real good stuff that and this is stuff that I, obviously we know healthcare needs and, and people need right at the end of the day it's about yeah. people getting the right info yeah it's about humans man it's about yeah. keeping us alive and healthy and functioning and and living the way we're supposed to right yep. And ending the confusion, ending the confusion. I mean, you're like, 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 I'm so confused. I put in Google and I get 9,000 different responses or nine different things. People tell me doing different things. And so I, you know, that's where we here are sitting saying, I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do, but I, with before, not before first saying, here's how it works. Like this just makes sense. Right. I was at the world health organization with your family, uh, 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 your parents actually were there with me uh, a year ago, and we hear a guy, the top guy, one of the top guys in the world at the world, Geneva, Switzerland, the World Health Organization, saying health is not about how you feel, it's essentially about how you function. You read the definition, right? And so I just want to encourage you out there, like what we're talking about is the most evidence-based approach to health that will give you the results that so many are looking for, but I know that it's confusing out there, and I get that. And so thanks, for, man, for being a voice of, of uh, reason. Thank you. All right, Lock Nation, Dr. Dan Sullivan dropping some knowledge bombs on how you can unleash your human potential. And you know what? I think this guy is human powered. I've seen him all over the world lecturing, teaching, working, and seeing patients, you know, working hard to actually practice what he preaches and studying the science and sharing it and making it usable for not just chiropractors, not just medical doctors, but people, right? Like all of us, we all need to understand what and where real health comes from. And we really need to focus on doing that. You're here listening to Lifestyle Locker Radio because I know you have a drive to be healthy. I know you have a drive to have such an awesome lifestyle for yourself, your family, that you're not, you're not going to just kind of sit back and listen and go, eh, chiropractic is kind of interesting. No, you may actually take some action steps and do a little more research. Connect with Dr. Dan. Maybe go to a chiropractor and have a conversation with them and maybe learn a little bit more. But do this today. Don't wait because you know what? Your health is something that is so, so precious, so valuable, right? Most of us will take action when we have this crazy crisis and then we dramatically shift our lives. You don't have to wait for that crisis. You can take action today. So Lock Nation, I love and appreciate you. And make sure you check the show notes for Dr. Dan, for ourselves. And get to lifestylelocker.com. We'll have all of the details there. Have an awesome day, Locker Nation. Bye-bye.